it's time for you to be free guys let's get into it for the week beginning march 9th 2020. Hello everybody, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message for the week beginning March 9th, 2020. Yes, I am in the same look that I was last week because I don't know when I was recording, well I'm recording it right now, but um, when I just did this uh, previous week's, the March 2nd one, I felt like the message had to flow into this one. So we're going to just run with it. That's what we're doing here. We're recording for the week of March 9th. Now, <sighs> freedom. Freedom. Now, your, your definition of freedom might be financial freedom. I'm going to feel really free and meaningful when I have a love partner. This, was, this is a big one. This was one of the biggest things I've seen in my career, <laughs> like, where everybody feels like they're half, half a human until they find their other half. And I almost, uh, gosh, if I say this, you guys are going to hate me, but it's almost becoming a sickness. Oh my God, I unsubscribe. <sighs> or you could wait and just hear me out, okay, and maybe work on something here. That's what we do here, okay? When we allow ourselves to get trapped into a thinking that we must be with somebody or we're not complete. You know I have certain things about certain things, okay? Oh, I messed up my hair. <laughs> I never know what my hair is doing. But that's why I have, I take such issue with that because it does feel like it's getting into this mentality of disempowerment, yes? So I am not whole and complete. I can't be happy until I have a love partner. You guys, I have spent many, many, many years on my own. And I have moments like that too, where I'm like, geez, is this ever going to happen? Because I got sick of it. <laughs> like, I get it. I totally get it. But this idea of freedom is freeing yourself from, let's just stick with relationships here for a second, freeing yourself from any sense of my life is incomplete until I meet the one. What? That whole time you're just going to like wait on someone? Really? And you got your labels. And people tell you that those labels are super important. More important than anybody else's journey. No one understands you. Oh, that's so disempowered. That's not what we do here. No, don't do that. You are whole and complete right now. Freedom has to do with finding happiness with what is. Not stepping too far into the future not stepping into the past. I don't know if you guys saw, but RuPaul actually has, hang with me, I'm going somewhere with this. RuPaul actually has a masterclass now. And I watched it. <laughs> RuPaul said, if you're sensitive to a curse word, there's one coming. So you know, get the kids away from the computer or the TV for a second, but it's not terrible. But um, he says in this masterclass uh, that he heard one time, if you have one foot in the future and one foot in the past, you're pissing on the present. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was so great. And when we're worrying, again, I highly recommend that master class. That whole beginning part is just amazing. Then he goes into like doing makeup and stuff like that. But that whole part is him talking about his childhood. Profound. To the point, and he's actually kind of coming from a very, well, it seems like some of the language he uses is very kind of spiritual and very interesting. I highly recommend. But when it comes to relationships, it's the same kind of thing. If, if you're worried about what happened in past relationships, maybe you have some trauma healing there. So maybe that's why you're getting pulled back. You should look at that uh, and heal yourself. But always bring it back to here. Collect the information, live here. Yes. Or if you're constantly thinking in the future, when's that love going to come? You're holding up your entire life. You're holding up what could bring you joy and happiness. Because here's the kick in the head. <laughs> if you've ever been sitting and waiting for love and waiting for love and waiting for love and then it comes along and now your whole life has to change anyway. And I've seen this a lot in this. This happens especially with women where they will move for the man. Not saying that that's bad unless you really didn't want to move, but you felt you had to, right? 
or I know men, hi guys, my guys that are here, is it okay that I call you my guys? Because I adore you. <laughs> There's a small percentage of my audience that are male and I love that you're here. Thank you for your support. Thank you all for your support as a matter of fact. But um, you know, when we try to compromise too much, when we're giving too much, we start to lose ourselves in the relationship. That is, I think, that has a higher probability of somebody who was quite frankly getting desperate for a relationship. That's why some of those labels, I really have a problem because I see how desperate people get with them and how they victimize themselves and how they martyr themselves. You incarnated to be you, to be present, to be living your existence, not waiting on some love story, which once you got into it, I've never met anybody who wasn't disappointed. (laughs) And where does disappointment come from? It comes from those high expectations. It comes from all the programming of what love should be. You know what? Love is, to me, feeling at home. Feeling connected. It's not being a trophy or having a trophy. So if you are somebody who is holding yourself up from freedom by waiting to be paired off with somebody. Not only are you doing yourself a disservice, you're not being present and connected with the whole. Hi, remember how I said, <laughs> don't, don't leave your light out because you're leaving a dark spot in the fabric of the universe. We need you, hi, you need to light up. Okay, we need you to be you. Watch the comments. I'm still let that defensive, 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 defensive. I'm just telling you be happy. I'm telling you go on vacation. I'm telling you, honey, to live it up. Okay. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you right now. Find your freedom and be honest with yourself. And love is a good example because that's the one that people, well, in careers too, I suppose that's a really good example too, because we really get hung up on what we think should be. And it knocks your energy down when you think that somehow there's something wrong with you, which is societally backed up, that there's something wrong with you if you aren't married or if you aren't in a relationship or if you haven't had a relationship in a while or whatever, there's something wrong with you. I'm one of the freest people I know. (laughs) I'm one of the freest people I know. And I have had the great gift of alone time for being, uh, you know, self-reflective and healing. And, and hopefully, you know, one day when I do, if, if it's meant for me, if I, you know, it's not one of those things that I'm like, oh, it has to happen or I'm not complete. I'm not that person (laughs) whatsoever. I'm not that person. But if it, if it should happen that I have a love partner, then I come to the table as a whole and complete independent person who's loving and in love because I want to be, because I want that connection, not because I need it to feed me, not because I need it to validate me, not because I need to be seen as something or I don't know who I am. That applies to friendships, right? If you have a need to look popular, how many followers do I have? How many likes do I have? How many, you know... Now, on YouTube, in the YouTube world, your subscriber count does kind of help with ad revenue. <laughs> so it does help with your livelihood, but, and, and probably on Instagram too. I don't really know how Instagram works behind the scenes like that. But what I'm getting at here is that I have seen so many people be in these inauthentic friendships. Friendships where they're getting used all the time. They're actually taking on the collective thought process instead of thinking for themselves seen this getting used why well at least I can say I have friends no you don't those aren't friends and friends are getting harder and harder to find right the real ones why digital era we're all isolating the only reality and only connection we want has to be through a device with some technology some EMFs coming off of it That's how we want to connect. Where are your real friendships? 
Freedom comes from not having to listen to the mean girl <laughs> who dictates to everybody else what you're doing on the weekend, right? Or I, I'm in my 40s and I, as a grown adult, I still have people, <laughs> believe it or don't, I still have people trying to control me or trying to get one up on me or trying to diminish me. I went and had a drink with somebody who calls herself spiritual and the whole time I didn't know what she was talking about. And she was so diminishing of my spiritual practices and my approach, basically. Which everybody has their approach. Whatever you connect to is beautiful. But this person <laughs> had, oh gosh, I, it's too long a story. I won't bore you with it. But just, just suffice it to say, she had an agenda to collect people to validate her. And because I wasn't willing to do that because it didn't really resonate. I mean, she hounded me for the longest time to hang out with her again. And I was not interested. I was like, why? So you can basically put me down for an hour? Like, no. <laughs> like, no. And that's part of the beauty of the freedom. When you have freedom of authenticity, we are talking about authenticity last week. When you feel free in who you are. Now you have different ideas. Now you have different standards. Now you're not going to just get into a relationship because you want to feed into some romantic idea and some romantic label and feel like you are whole and complete. People use certain labels out there to stalk people, to stay in abusive relationships. And when people started questioning some of these labels, oh, now there are even more convenient theories around it to explain it away. Do you not see that there was a seed planted by someone? This idea that would hook into human fear of not being a part of a tribe, of not being loved. And it locked you into a mindset. It locked you into something that could potentially make you feel not whole and complete until you have somebody. <sighs> make you feel desperate to get there. These are all low frequency. And to feel desperate to hang on to that person that distracts you with a drama story that steals every bit of what makes you divine. Go ahead and fight me in the comments. Know who you're talking to. I didn't come here for no reason. I know what I'm doing. Do you see that your power is being taken away? If you want love, you have to know what love is. You can only know what love is until you find it within yourself. That's when you'll know. You can't know what's inside of you. <laughs> you won't get to that self-love until you spend some time on your own, not running away, not distracting yourself with sex, food, drug, drugs, alcohol, video games, TV, social events. Oh my God, I'm obsessed over these shoes. Now listen, hey, yo, I like luxury products too. I really do. <laughs> but I am a Taurus rising. It's got to be a little bit practical as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love luxury. I love beauty. But it has to not just be for the sake of how much it was. But. Oh my God, I'm obsessed over these shoes. Oh my God, I have to. Distraction, distraction, distraction. Pulls you away from who you are. Michelle, that's mean. What are you telling me? I can't be, I can't like fashion. It's not what I'm saying, okay? Because <laughs> I like fashion too-ish. I mean, I'm not that great at putting it together, but whatever. Um, <laughs> what I'm getting at here is your intention. If you love makeup, honey, love it. But you better love it, right? Not to put a mask because you think your face is awful. <laughs> right? That's not what we're doing here. P.S. Bobby Brown also has a master class and she says there's nothing wrong with your nose. You don't have to contour it. And I was like, boom, 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 boom. Yes, that's what we want to say to people. There's nothing wrong with your nose. You do not need to contour it, you know. Uh, but again, if it's artistic for you and you love doing that, then do it. But if you're doing it because you think no one can see my face without makeup, that's not, um, no, find yourself, find yourself, okay? I remember years ago, there was this, I don't remember what it was, it was like some t TV show, and they were like, the vainest woman in the world, she will not leave her house without doing her hair and makeup. 
and I watched it. And I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever <laughs> seen because this woman, she, that vanity is disguising deep self-loathing. She didn't know that she was beautiful and it was the saddest thing I'd ever seen. The dumbest and the saddest. She wasn't dumb. The show was dumb. But I, I felt very sad for her. She was a beautiful woman and she couldn't accept it. Why? She's programmed. How many of you look at somebody who's either too skinny or well, too skinny according to someone's weird standards or too fat? Someone who is way too skinny or too fat according to mainstream considerations. I know I'm real tired of one body type being represented in movies and in print. I'm tired of certain things being glorified and then women expecting themselves to, listen, I am five foot two. I am not growing, okay? <laughs> I am five foot two. I think that's it. I don't think I'm, I'm going beyond here. I think it's down from here, maybe. I don't know. I keep trying to stay very positive and be like, no, I'm taller, I'm taller, I'm taller. But why? Why can't I just be five foot two? Why not? P.S. I didn't know that people who were of average height could see the top of the refrigerator. This is just a side story. I want to tell you. I literally put on heels and I was like, oh my God, it's a mess up here. I found all the lighters for the candles, which I thought had, you know, gotten thrown out. Uh, there's magnets up there that I didn't know. Uh, and I realized that everybody comes into my home and they could see the mess up there that I was unaware of. Again, side story over. But <laughs> my whole point here is that we get so programmed to think that if you look this way or that way, that you should hate yourself. Do you not see the seed that was planted by someone who wants to have you believe that your expression, your physical expression is wrong so that they can sell you something so that your energy is beyond that though. It's not just about selling stuff. It's about lowering your frequency, keeping you from joy, and then overcorrecting and coming into your ego. Look at me, I lost 30 pounds. I know I'm hot now. Ew, you know those people? I know those people. Or, <laughs> or that whole thing of the glow up. One of the saddest things I've ever seen are those talk shows where they do the, the makeovers. And the woman comes out and she's like, she hates it. She hates every minute of it. But she's like, because there was this awful message that was sent to her that you're not okay as you are. You're too dumpy. You need to cut your hair like this. That way people see that you care about yourself. Well, maybe letting herself be authentic and have the freedom to be authentic was the real self-care. And now she's being told, if you want to be beautiful, you better conform. Even if that doesn't feel right for her, right? With career, same kind of idea. You can just apply it right over. How many times do you allow yourself to get pressured? Let me tell you something. I don't care if you're a CEO watching this. Your title means nothing. I can say this with the utmost authority. I spent a good portion of my adult life working for CEOs, presidents, board members, you name it, okay? <laughs> I, 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 okay, I, 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 I'm about to go down a road. Um, Y'all just people, okay? Y'all are just people. Calm yourselves, all right? Oh, it used to get on my nerves so bad when someone would walk in just because of the CEO, they got their chest puffed out, and they're like, boop, 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 boop. You're not curing cancer, okay? Calm yourself. Although there's cures out there already conspiracy theory at 11. Um, but <laughs> you're you, okay. Re love and respect, all love and respect to your path. And of course there are good CEOs out there too. You know, I'm not saying everybody's evil or bad, but the ones that I would come across, man, they were just, their whole energy was all about a persona and walking away from who they might really be. Looking like they have all the answers, looking like they're in charge because that's what we honor. How many times have you heard of people go, yeah, I left my corporate job, <clears throat> me, and you hear of people leaving corporate jobs to go make candles 
<laughs> or to go be, um, I don't know what the proper word is, but go make cheese or go be a farmer or whatever, because somewhere along the line, someone told them that the thing that they really wanted to do wasn't good enough. It wasn't fancy enough. It wasn't impressive enough. So you need to deaden that creative part of you and fuel yourself on something fake to get over here so that you look important. So when we talk freedom, that's what we're saying. You're finding your way back to you. This goes into last week's message of authenticity. What is it that you really want? Power is empty. The power that we see that's presented to us, absolutely empty. What do you want for you? That's freedom. All right, so let's get some cards. Don't go away. I know, it's been long. We hang out with each other, right? <laughs> if you would like to get a personal reading with me where I tune into your energy and give you some soul level guidance, just go to my website at angelsouls444.com. I also have courses at Gumroad. There's some at Teachable. A few of the courses are at my website. All that information is down below. And thank you to everybody who supports me on Patreon. It really helps out a lot. All right. Ooh, yeah, there's one jump in. Ooh, ancient, this is a master teacher card, ancient wisdom crystal, ancient wisdom. So here we go, this is reconnecting. All the stuff that we need to know has already been filtered. Well, I mean, there's new information coming in all the time, but we can get a nice strong base, <laughs> right? By tapping into what has been there all along. And this might mean going back beyond what you consider ancient times, okay? So the ancient wisdom is already within you and it can be awakened. So at times when the wisdom had flowed through a human being, it was because of the awakening, right? It's not this elusive thing that you have to strive for. You just have to remember it. And so there were civilizations that actually remembered themselves. They remembered their coding, if you wanna see it that way, and they allow it to come forward. And then we start, you know, losing faith in ourselves as humans. We started losing faith in our worlds. Now we have plagues, we have war, we have all kinds of stuff. Anytime that stuff starts to flare up, which we do have something like that going on right now, I'm shuffling the cards here. Um, it's because we're losing faith in ourselves. We're forgetting ourselves. Well, how do you get back in touch? You let go of the story. Stop thinking that the goal is to be beautiful and rich. Well, that's power. That's what they'll have you think, right? It's not. The power is and has always been with us, okay? So we have Red Jasper here, healthy boundaries. Look at that, <laughs> all right? And this is also being grounded and it does uh, have this feeling of getting back to center, but again, not just going along because you think that that's what's going to make you valuable, knowing that you are already valuable and you don't have to follow anybody else's rules. This also speaks to people who, and I've known plenty of these people, who are just rebellious just for the sake of rebellion. It's not even what they really believe in, I don't think. It's just, you know, they're being just as dogmatic about their belief systems on the opposite side of things. So how many times have you heard somebody say, oh, I didn't know that, I don't know, pick something. I didn't know that you still believe in Jesus, okay? I didn't know you believed in Jesus. I can't be friends with you. <sighs> Work on that trauma response. Work on it because, wow. <laughs> wow, you have to be exactly like me or I can't be friends with you. Honestly, that's not anybody you wanna be friends with anyway, if they're gonna be, you know, that judgmental and toxic that's toxic <laughs> all right and it's not like you don't have to believe in jesus i'm just saying like you believe in whatever you believe in you respect others that's it that's it how many did we pull already two two one more shuffle i think we'll do it there we go oh do you see that you see it before i do boop 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 there we go Morganite, so Morganite relationship healing. You've got to heal that relationship with yourself and with your place in this world. 
If your mind went to like, I know I'm fighting with my boyfriend. I know my girlfriend's on my last nerves or my wife is on my last nerve and blah, 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 blah. Please go watch some other videos on my channel. Thank you. <laughs> no, but you, you got bigger problems here. Okay. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. You need to look a little bit deeper. All right. If you're having problems with other people, okay, chances are pretty good. There's some unresolved thing within you. Now, Morganite is a beautiful, beautiful, a very calming, very loving kind of card. So here. I don't like that I have a corded mic here, guys, but this is the best mic I've ever used. All the other ones don't sound right. <laughs> Even my shotgun mic, it has like an echo to it. It's a whole thing. Anyway, one more card and then we'll get onto the color card, right? Also, if you're, there it is, Selenite Spiritual Awakening. Check that out. If you're also one of those people like, you talk too much and you don't make sense. You're really annoying. Oh, shadow work. <laughs> Do your shadow work. You know, Michelle, really, you're, if you're really sitting here and you want to connect with my energy, because I'm connecting with you, uh, yeah. the only thing that's going to make you feel that way is if you are getting triggered by what I'm saying, because otherwise you would enjoy the connection, right? You're either getting triggered by what I'm saying, or you have let life just completely run you. And all you're thinking is, ah, this is going on too long. Ah, time is not linear. You got plenty of it. Time is not linear. You have plenty of it. Okay. Thanks. All right. So Selenite spiritual awakening. <laughs> Again, we, we tend to look at this and have looked at this for years as a journey. It's beyond the beyond. And we have to go through so much to make it work and to make it happen and all this stuff. And we've been looking out there for our spiritual awakening when it's here. <laughs> here in our body already. And of course, selenite is a very peaceful crystal and it helps with angelic communication. I like to have actually a piece of onyx, which is very grounding, absorbs negativity, and a piece of selenite, which is very uplifting and you know high frequency, right kind of flanking my door. Now this isn't about superstition per se, because everybody has that argument, but I do feel that things have an energy. I'm sensitive to it. I can pick up on it. So I think it works in that way, but I don't do it out of fear, right? Most superstitions are out of fear. I do it because I, I want the whole intention is to bring beautiful energy into my home. <laughs> right? And that's it. And for every person who walks in to feel very balanced, and harmonized and at peace with being in my space, right? All right, let's get a couple more shuffles going here. There we go. I love this green, revitalize your nervous system. The number is 31, reduces to four. Of course, the angels are with us, but look at how spring-like this card is. This is such a beautiful color, and this is letting you come to life come to life. Let the weight of expectations go away, your own and others, right? And allow yourself to flow with what is. Stay present. You don't need outside circumstances to happen in your life. Probably circumstances that might be beyond your control to happen before you can be happy. All right. Just remember that. So we're going to leave it there, guys. Oh, and wait, is this the week? No, I guess next week is St. Patrick's Day. But hey, March is shamrock shake season. So here's your green, okay? <laughs> We're going to leave it there, guys. I'm sending you so much love and take care.